In this video, we'll look at question 9 from the second paper of the 2017 exam. So in this question, we are given a theorem and an attempted proof, and we are supposed to evaluate whether that proof is correct or where the first mistakes occur, in which of the steps of the proof. If you happen to know this theorem, then you'll immediately know that the proof is probably wrong, because this is, in fact, a special case for n equals 3 of Fermat's last theorem. It says that there are no positive integers a, b, and c, such that a cubed plus b cubed equals c cubed. And if you are not familiar with this theorem, but know the Pythagorean theorem, you can be tempted to say that there must be integers like that. If this was squared, not cubed, then we have plenty of them. We have 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared, 5, 12, 13, and others, the Pythagorean triplets. But for any greater power than squared, there are no such positive integers. And that's Fermat's last theorem, which was only proved a few years ago by an English mathematician called Andrew Wiles in, in a proof which is probably the most complicated proof the humankind has ever seen. But the student who attempted to prove this special case chose to prove this theorem by contradiction. So they said, suppose that there are in fact such numbers as a, b, and c, that their cubes add up. Then we can subtract a b cubed of both sides. We can break up this expression into a product of two brackets. And since this is a cubed, we can associate the smaller number with a and the bigger number with a squared. Well, then a squared must be a squared, so c minus b squared. But it is also a squared, which is the second bracket. And when we expand out, we get an equation in c and b, which reduces to 3cb equals 0. So b or c must be 0. But our initial assumption was that a, b, and c are integers. That means positive numbers. 0 is not an integer. And that's a contradiction with the initial claim. And hence, the opposite must be true. It must be true that there are no such numbers, a, b, and c, which add up like this. So let's go through it um, step by step. And let's try and uncover the first mistake. So this assumption, there's nothing wrong about it. We can pretty much assume anything we want. Then this subtracting of b cubed was done correctly. That's just algebra. Now, is this the correct factorization for c cubed minus b cubed? Well, the two brackets give us c times c squared is c cubed, and so on every term. Luckily, uh, some terms cancel in the middle, and we do, in fact, end up just with c cubed minus b cubed. So this step was correct, too. The first one and the second one are correct. Now, how about the third one? Can you think of a counterexample to the third step? So how about we let um, a be 10, then this is 1,000, and then the first bracket could be 2, and the second bracket could be 500. So the second statement definitely holds for this choice of a, b, and c. But a is definitely not equal to c minus b, as um, the student claimed in the third statement. And a squared, which is 100, is not equal to 500. So we managed to find a counterexample to step three. It might be true in some special cases, but not, it cannot be generalized to all cases, like the one which we have just come up with. So as we can see, the first mistake occurred in step three, which uh, was option D in the exam.